let's look at the next one. The next one is chain. So chain, let's start by reading the definition here. Chain maps a function over a list and concatenates the results. Chain is also known as flat map in some libraries. And then it also says that dispatches to the chain method of the second argument if present according to the fantasy land chain specification. And so as I've mentioned a bunch of times, we'll talk about this more complex stuff in, in, uh, in a future video series. Potentially, I'll, I'll make a series on, on the fantasy land specification. But this first thing, right? Chain maps a function over a list and concatenates the results. So, so remember, I mean, mapping is like when you have some mappable collection and then you have a, a, a mapping function. And then you map the function over all of the items in the collection, produce a new collection where each of the values have been run through that function. But then what happens is that we concatenate the results. So, I mean, their example here is actually pretty good. Like if you have a function which is called duplicate, which when given some n, I mean, they probably say n here to, to refer to number, but let's just say x. I mean, it's like anything like when given some argument, it produces an array or like a pair of that argument two times. So it produces an array. So so like, I mean, this is easier if we look at this, like if we have actually, let's start by defining that function. If we have, uh, let me call it dupe just for dupe, or sorry, let me call it duplicate. So duplicate some x and I'll just return this uh, array of, of x two times, right? And if I, if I just console log dupli the duplication of 10, right? You can see that we have uh, an array of 10, 10. And clearly this could have been uh, anything. So if I pass foo, you have foo, foo. Like you have an array of foo, foo or of two instances of foo. And then, so, so the thing is, let's, let's say that we have this array, like let me just say, con define this constant called r, which, which contains one, two, three, four, right? And if I say map the function duplicate over the array r, and we'll console log that. Oh, sorry, map is not defined. I, I meant r.map, of course. By the way, as people have been mentioning in the comments, you can extract out the the functions from Ramda, like like using import syntax or like by, by actually just saying re require Ramda dot duplicate or I mean a number of different there are a number of different ways of, of sort of extracting the functions that you need so you don't have to say r dot. I would actually highly recommend you do that in your projects where it makes sense to do that because it's kind of it kind of gives a lot of bloat to 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 say r dot all the time, but but within within this uh, video series, I, I will keep saying r dot just so that it's super obvious when we're defining something ourselves or when something is from the native JavaScript library or when something, or, or I should say versus when something is from, from the Ram, the library. So, so that's the reason I keep saying R here. Like, again, like if I would do this, if I would do this seriously within a project, I would somehow get rid of this R. But anyways, I mean, so if we map the function duplicate over the array R, then you can see that we get this array of one, one, two, two, three, three, and four, four. And again, because if you think about it, what we're doing, like we're mapping the function duplicate and duplicate does not produce a new number, right? It's not duplication in that sense. It's duplication in the sense that it produces a new array. But what's interesting here is that this array of arrays, or if we put it this way, actually, arrays of arrays are flattenable. <laughs> like you can flatten uh, arrays of arrays. Like if you have an array of arrays of numbers, then you could flatten that into an array of numbers or a list of numbers. Uh, so if you look at this, I mean, what we have here is that like the zeroth element is an array of one, one, the first element is an array of two, two, the third, uh, or sorry, the second is an array of three, three. But actually, maybe what we want is that we want to flatten all of this stuff so that we simply have one array and or one list and not a list of lists. So we would have an array, sorry, I keep saying array and lists interchangeably, like uh, I guess in JavaScript, they are actually called arrays, but in Ramda, they, they tend to call them lists, but whatever, I mean, I, I'm using them interchangeably. So what we might want is that we might want to have a list where we have one, one, so, so one, comma, one, comma, two, comma, two, two comma three etc 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 right so so it's a list of numbers it's not a list of lists of numbers and for to do that we could use flatten and I think actually there is a, a, a flatten method here in Ramda right so flatten right so like given an array of A's you produce a, another array of B's or a, 
uh, given a list of A, you produce a list of Bs. And this seems actually it's it's uh, a recursively flattening. So like if you have mul if you have multiple levels, then then you would fla uh, flatten out all of those different levels. I, I just realized now. I, I remember it's called unnest if you only want to unnest a single a level, which which it says here, right? Like which removes one level of nesting from any chain. But I mean here it doesn't matter because we just have an array of an array of numbers and, and just I, I guess flatten is a pretty clear name. So, so let's let's flatten this thing as well. If we look at that, then you can see that we get one comma one comma two comma two comma three comma et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you compare this result to this result, right? Like this is what we get if we just do map and if we have something which is not flattened, right? Like we have we map over a collection, but then we return a collection from the mapping function, or the mapping function returns collections of the same type as like the, the main collection that we're mapping over. And then uh, here uh, we actually flatten that out. So the function, what was the function we were looking at? A uh, chain. So the thing with chain chain is that we can do both of these things in the same step. We can do, we can map the function, but we can also concatenate the results. And, and concatenation of each of the results is uh, the same thing here as flattening. And actually, I mean, if you're familiar with reduce, let's just think about this. Isn't this actually the same thing as saying r dot uh, reduce over r dot concat starting from empty list and then given the mapping of duplicate over R. Uh, let's just look at that. Yeah, so I mean, that's the same thing. So yeah, I mean, if you're familiar with reduce from before, or I mean, we'll get to reduce reduce afterward. But, but I mean, essentially, that's why they're saying concatenation, because like they're they're reducing over concatenation. So it's like it's a concatenation of every result. But anyways, I mean, let's let's just do it this way. So R dot chain, if we then say r dot chain the function duplicate over the array r, then you can see we still get like this flat list. Because if you think about it, what happens? What happens is that we first, well, actually, I mean, if we just go back, I think actually it's probably something exactly like this. Let's look at the implementation to see whether it's it's super close to that or not. Because if they are flattening afterwards, it's probably very, very simple. Uh, so yeah, they, they map the function over the monad, right? So, so this is why they're talking about like dispatches the chain method of the second argument uh, if present. So, so I think, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, like maybe there are other criteria as well, but if something is chainable, it's probably a monad. And this is why they're calling it monad here. But we'll dig into this as I've learned a bit more about this. But you can see essentially what they're doing is that they're saying make flat and then they're passing false here. So I mean, this is some internal method that they have that they uh, grab from from this other module internal and that's called make flat. So I don't know what this false is. Maybe this false is that it's not a recursive, for example, might very well be. But some, so they're constructing a flattening function and then they're passing the result of mapping. So in some, in some sense, it's very, very similar to what we did here where we say we want to flatten the result of calling map on, of course, the, this array we passed in immediately. Yeah, oh, okay, but here, of course, they took, pass in that, that monad as well. But yeah, so, so that's so, so that's chain essentially. Like, if you have if you have a mapping function that produces lists and you're mapping over a list, but you don't want you don't want a list of lists as result but you actually want a flattened version of, of, of the results, then instead of doing this in the sort of two-step approach that we did here now, you could do it this way. You could simply call chain. And uh, I would assume, but now I'm going out on a limb here, but I would assume that this whole notion of a chain and the fantasy land specification and monads and all of that is like something along the lines of that if you have a monad, you can, uh, or, or let me put it this way, if you have something which is chainable, if you have something which is chainable that produces something which is chainable, like if your outer collection is chainable and your function, your mapping function produces things that are chainable, then then you can also use chain because that's the same thing as like concatenation or rather I should say it this way, concatenation is one instance of this very general idea of chaining like of mapping a function and then chaining into the whole. And actually, if we look at the type signature here, it seems like it's something along these lines. So it's like, if you give me a function that maps from A's to M potentially, maybe stands for monad here, but a container of B. So an M of B where M is chainable, and then you pass me a, ch a chainable A, I will provide you a chainable B, right? So if you think about this in, in terms of, of lists, right? Then we're saying, if 
you have a function that given some element, given some A produces a list of Bs, if you give me that function and you then give me a list of A's, then I will produce a list of Bs, right? Because if, I mean, if, if, if uh, you produce lists of Bs and lists of Bs are, are chainable and lists are chainable or lists are concatenable, then whenever you produce a list of A, or sorry, whenever your, whenever your function, whenever I'm mapping and I, I, I happen to produce a list of B, I can concat that with, with, with the next up, with the result of the next application of this function and concatenate that with the next up, uh, with the result of the next application of this function and so forth and so forth uh, until we, from this uh, list of A's, produce this list of B's. So it's a bit hairy and like, this is again, like a bit beyond my knowledge, but, but probably like, if you think about it, it kind of intuitively makes sense. Like there's a more general idea going on here beyond concatenation, where concatenation is one instance of this general idea. But anyways, without all of this complex stuff, if you happen to have a function, if you happen to have an array, and if you happen to have a function that produces arrays, but you don't want an array of arrays, but you simply want an array, then you can use chain, chain to automatically flatten the result of the mapping. That's chain. Let's move on to the next one.